controversial subjects with the facts can be tense. But we are a sub science here to make things make sense. Today we are talking about human challenge studies, the concept of actually intentionally infecting people with coronavirus in order to speed up the process of creating a vaccine. Hello, it's Mitch. And it's Greg. And welcome back to Side, side note. note. I was about to say it at the same time. Side Note. Um, do you want to jump into the actual studies and talking about uh, I do. I think it's I'm oh, I think this is fascinating. Yes. Okay, every time this happens, I forget which button to push, so we'll hope to start one. Study time. Study time. Study time. Study time. Study time. Woo! Cool. That right. was good. Um, you want to take the lead? Yeah, sure. I'm actually trying to to, to touch my um uh, tablet. Pop. Wow, I'm using my tablet with my toe. That's disgusting. Oh my that god, my is toe? Not okay. My toe is sticking <laughs> out of my sock, like when Gaston does in Beauty and the Beast, which was a sexual awakening for myself. I think there's two kind of people in this world. Um, but first of all, yes, was also a sexual awakening for me. Oh okay, yeah, I thought you were gonna drag me so hard, but then deep down you like. Yeah, I was like, I kind of. Uh, but second of all, to have a hole in your sock big enough that your whole toe can come out of it means the sock is no more to me. No, you just tuck it underneath and then like, but doesn't it keep tuck- popping out? No, I tucked, I tucked the sock in between. Again, people have come for a mean? very serious issue to talk about today. And we are about, I tuck this in between my two little toesies here. Good as new. All right. So that's the other kind I mean, of technically it's not good as new, but <laughs> <laughs> all right. So lead us off, Greg, where are things at and why are we having this conversation? Okay. So in the science community uh, right now, there's a big discussion, obviously about a vaccine to alleviate COVID-19 to alleviate this pandemic that we are talking about, why we're a little stir crazy in our houses across the world, apartments, whatever you choose to live. This is a huge deal. This pandemic is not slowing down. And as we move forward, I think it's becoming more and more apparent to everyone that we are going to not be able to live our lives as normal until there is a vaccine. And when, as we've talked about our, in our vaccine video, this third stage of a vaccine is very timely because what you have to do is you have to give people a tested, animal tested vaccine, give the, in the same study, give people a placebo so they don't actually even get the vaccine. Then they have to go out into the world and they have to live and then they have to wait and see what will happen when they maybe get the virus, maybe don't. Like this takes so much time because you can't just give people the virus. That is something called a human challenge trial. And it's something that we are going to talk about today because people are considering it right now because we are in this unprecedented pandemic. We are currently at home, have not left our house for this specific reason. And so what I want to talk today about is about a study that came out last week that sort of gives you the information about what this would mean, how this would work, and we can all formulate an opinion on this Just talk to our friends, talk to our families. It's very fascinating. We did a poll on our YouTube channel that was like, went crazy kind of viral and people had a lot of opinions about about whether or not they would be willing to do this. Whether or not they should do this, partake in this. It's a fascinating subject. So I'm just going to start maybe by explaining it to you so that we can all understand. Is that okay? Sure. The actual trial that's going on right now. It's not going on right now. It's a study to put this out into the ether so we can all discuss and sort of formulate our opinions about whether or not we would do something like this. Okay. 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 Do you have any questions off the bat before we get in? No, you you can start talking about it and then I'll maybe poke and prod and see if there's anything missing. Okay. So again, it's called a controlled human challenge study. And what would happen is that we would make sure that all the volunteers who would be involved in the study would be extremely aware of what is happening. So the first thing is that you would need they would probably do tests, literally mental tests on you to be like, do you understand like what this what means? Exactly yeah, because I think that that would be a horrible thing <laughs> to like halfway through this and be like, wait, wait. you're <laughs> giving it a virus? <laughs> yeah. I just thought I was hanging out here for a couple uh-huh. of weeks. So they would do it with low risk individuals. So people they've decided would be between the ages of 20 to 40 who would not have had the virus before. So they would have to test you Make sure like through antibody testing or whatever, just decide you haven't gotten it before. So you would say, I have never had the symptoms Mm -hmm. and they would test you. And again, if you don't have the antibodies, it's a whole different story about whether or not that means you have or haven't had it. But But that's the best they have to go off right now. And they would also, 
take volunteers only from places where they would be likely to get it inevitably. So okay. right now, maybe you would think these would be young, healthy individuals who might have to work on the front lines in Queens, New York. Right. Would maybe okay. be a place to be like, okay, that's where we would start getting volunteers because they might in their heads think, well, you know what? I'm like you're already going to get it anyway, but like, like, oh, your high... likelihood is much higher. So maybe Again, you can be helping with this cause anyway, if you're yes. going to get it. And this is all volunteer based. So they would just, you know, go out and start talking to people in those areas about volunteering for this. And no way would anyone ever be forced to do this. Right. Okay. Um, so what would happen is they would be like, tested on before sort of like a standardized testing thing to start to be like you know making sure you are healthy making sure your blood counts and your white blood cell counts and all these things are kind of like normal to make sure that you are what would be representative of like a normal person and somebody that wouldn't get sick from it or sorry not not get sick but wouldn't likely die well they're like based on what we understand on all the videos we've done things like that like they're not going to choose people who are over 40 they're not going to choose that's what i mean yeah like they're they're 20 because they're not adults maybe they don't have the enough mm. uh, enough of like i mean i'm not saying if you're under 20 you aren't intelligent but like let's just choose these as like between 20 and 40 as the ages of you know where people can give consent like at that point well in america 21 you can drink you can drive right. you okay. can like watch porn <laughs> None of that has anything to do with this although you would be stuck inside for a long time so hopefully they would give you a little porn hub access. okay <laughs> so they would isolate you for two weeks Prior to this, to make sure that you also weren't, say you were infected the day you showed up to this test. So there would be a whole two-week period right, where you to would make also... sure you didn't already have the infection. Yes. To, which would tamper with the results ultimately. Yes. So they would like, essentially, you would go somewhere for two weeks before you even started to get what would be either the vaccine that they are trying to test with or a placebo. Okay. So this is the part where it gets a little scary because mm -hmm. it's like, like what? I don't want the placebo. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because also after they give you the vaccine they're testing for or the placebo, they would then wait for what they will decide is the amount of time it would take for your body's immune response to kick in. If you, again, some people aren't even getting the actual vaccine mm -hmm. and then they would administer the coronavirus SARS-CoV-2 virus to you at an amount that they have studied is like in line with what would be an average amount for someone to get. Cause we also know that dose of virus is actually makes a difference. Yeah. Makes a difference. So, so you're saying in an amount that is typical that if you were to have touched a surface that someone sneezed on or coughed on or like just your average type of exposure. Is that what you mean? I mean, that would be part what of this. They're right? trying to figure like, out they what would, is yeah, that average they're, exposure. They're not fully at the point where they would know what that exposure would be. Uh, this is again a study talking about this concept. they're trying to get something close enough to that. Yeah, it would be something that would be uh, quite low is what they're saying. Like okay. even say the average amount of dose was something, they would probably go a bit lower than that. Again, this is, Okay. This is dangerous, right? Mm -hmm. Like we know that your body can respond to this virus in a variety of ways, regardless of your age. Like mm -hmm. there's a lot of unknowns at this point. Then they would carefully monitor you. You would be away from society and you would be in a state of the art facility when it comes to healthcare. So they would be essentially every day checking your blood to see, you know, what type of immune response is the vaccine working? Is your body, you know, fighting it off? If you have the placebo, is your body randomly fighting? Like imagine it was a placebo effect. <laughs> That's not the case. That would be but, cool. <laughs> I mean, there are really wild placebo effects out there. Yeah, but we're not going to say but... it into the mic and into our audience. Oh this yeah. No, 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 no. Anyway, <laughs> going to be fixed by, no. by, just by believing you it. have the vaccine. <laughs> um, but they would, you know, they would have access to the best healthcare possible. To, so that's part of the arrangement. Yes. That if you get sick, we will take care of you as we, best as we can. The, as best we can. But again, this is like... Because that's the part that scares me. And it's a hypothetical right now. It's not... They're not saying that we're going to do this. They're trying to like put this so out. So who? Who is this? Um, a series of researchers. Like one, just proposing this idea? Yes. Like to get approved or to see if there's even interest from yes, people? Yes. Literally to put it out into the zeitgeist being like, okay, we know how long it takes mm. to make a vaccine. We know the third phase trials of these vaccines are what take the most time. We might be able to speed up the process if we can properly right. create a trial where we induce it. We induce it. 
Mm. But the thing is, is that it's, there's a lot of ethical issues with this. Like this is a huge issue. You know, people have tested vaccines in a variety of like problematic ways in the past, which Mm -hmm. they're not, I can tell from reading this article, they are not saying to do that. I think they would want to do this in the global West. I think this would be a thing to do in Canada, to do in America, Mm. in state of the art facilities with the best healthcare on populations that like, like this is not are at a low risk of death are at a low risk of death. And I think that the thing that was fascinating for me, at least was when I talked about this a bit on our community page, on our YouTube channel, how resounding it was there. I think it's about 60% of people now say they would be willing to do this, which is in our poll. In our poll, yeah. which was also an interesting But there thing. was like hundreds of thousands of people who voted in that, right? Yeah. And it was like, I think one thing that this study can't really, you know, you can't study this is the altruistic feeling that people are willing to risk their own lives for the livelihood of the planet at, at not at many times in the world's history. Could you be a part of the most profound study right like it's very relevant to right now and if you if you took part in this you could actively understand and know that you are changing the course of and the future or at least at least providing an opportunity to do that and it made me just interested in that idea like the first study would be a hundred people then the second one would be three thousand is like the way i'm like yeah i could see how people are like enticed by being one of the hundred who well, are also a there's there's a kind history. of appealingness that you would get it under a controlled situation, right? So there's a there would be a relief to knowing you got it and that you're fine. Like for example, if I found out today that I actually had it and I was one of the people that happened to have no symptoms, or maybe I felt kind of cloudy one day, whatever. That would that would be a relief to me in some ways because I'd go, okay, I don't actually have to live in fear. I don't have to be as mm-hmm. scared when I go into public. Even if we're still under like lockdown, when I go to the grocery store, I don't have to literally be as afraid. Yes, we're still learning how long immunity lasts and things like that. So I think there's an appealingness that's a selfishness as well as the other end, which is... Huh. Oh, I see. I didn't think of it. I thought it mostly as like people trying to be altruistic but you're saying some people might be like just give it to me get me get it over with yeah well i was listening to some interesting conversations and after we come back from a break like i want to talk a little bit about something called flu camps where and and i've heard discussions around this and what happens when people become immune and we have a society that's segmented and do we let people who are immune go back to work go back Hmm. into public and how do you identify apparently in china they're talking about each individual gets a unique qr code so that you cannot on their phone so that you can't give it to somebody else but then that becomes a really hot commodity and people want to get sick and what does that do to people when you have the ability this is different because it's within a controlled environment they're not just saying hey anyone can sign but up for this it, it it is different but it makes me be like wow so many people on this poll that we again just did on our youtube channel said yes and I'd never thought of that. I, like the, I truly the, thought, oh, they're just saying yes because they want to be a part of this historic moment. Well, but I it's think, actually like it could, like, uh, yeah, right. There could be separate motives. I mean, yeah, that's what. That's also probably what the pre-research for these trials would be, like fi- finding out why people, what people's motives are, if they understand. Because just giving one survey question doesn't really give you an understanding of a person, right? So we. And, and the way it's asked can influence them. So it's very well that the way people read it, they might have been like, yes, I'm willing to take that risk to help people. And it it's hard to know how many were like, oh, yeah, I want it so I can feel like I don't have to worry about it anymore. Probably less that because of the way the question was asked. Yeah, but also there's a way of thinking about this, too, which is that assuming like th- these vaccines will have gone through a variety of tests to get to the point where we would eventually be willing to try it on people. But you know, in the past, vaccines can actually make things worse. Yeah, well, before they're before they're approved for safety. Before they're approved for safety, again. So, like, this is not to give anyone right. in the anti-vax movement any ammunition. This is just to say, like, we. That's would why be, they're testing this. Yeah, and this would be this would be skipping this would be skipping years of testing in order to jump to this moment because the reason vaccines are so safe and the reason why everyone should have the proper vaccines when they can have access to them is because they are so safe. They've been tested so rigorously. Mm -hmm. And so this is just like, again, like 
I could see people being like, oh, well, great. I got the vaccine. But it's like you are still in part of and you, Yeah, you may not be getting the final vaccine. You might be getting a version that ends up not working properly. So I think that is, yeah, there's two elements. Not only is there, there a risk that you get sick with coronavirus and you haven't been even given the vaccine. So now you have to go through that and hopefully you're fine. Likely the way they test you, you would be, you'd survive. That would be the, the best way. The, I guess the best way to think about this would be the worst case scenario, which right. would be that. You either get coronavirus or... Or you get a vaccine that makes you more sick because of the way you are. But, but that's less already, likely. Yeah. yeah. And they will have already done tests. Like a lot of the, you can weed out a lot of those vaccines in animal testing. And it's not like the vaccine would give you some other disease. It's more the question of vaccines go through testing to make sure that they don't inflame more. So mm -hmm. they basically give you a bit of a piece of the, the virus or parts of it or a protein to code for it. And there is a chance that done in the wrong way, it could actually stimulate a response that's not what you want. Maybe it over stimulates your immune system to a degree that actually is damaging. So, but only in, like not in any vaccine that has been properly tested. Oh no, sorry, I don't mean. You mean in this specific? I mean case. in trials before yeah. vaccines are approved. That's what they're testing. Yeah. Hey, we think this will provide immunity, but if it only does in 70% of people and 30% of people have a reaction that's worse, okay, this is not approved, right? Yeah. Like they need to have a threshold by which the vaccine is safe for the mass majority of people and doesn't cause any worse issues. I just, I thinking about this, I'm like, I, I could see this starting to happen. I could see human challenge trials happening. I could see this. Well, I don't see why not. Is there a reason against it other than like, well, I mean, it's like, if you can, if you can make sure people understand what they're getting into and that they approve of it, is there, you yeah, know, I mean, yeah, there, what, I think the, the reason this is that someone would die and then it would be on their hands. Yes. Like think about that. But that could happen in a vaccine trial that could happen in a me any medical trial. It wouldn't, they, it wouldn't necessarily happen in the vaccine trial in the way that they don't jump. To, so and fast. they do not inoculate people with the viruses. Yeah. That's the whole point. You're giving someone the virus. So it's not actually appropriate to say that. This has anything to do with any like past uh, vaccines or right. flu Right. I mean, I assume or, the risk is higher because there's been less testing. But what I mean is I assume and the risk is higher medications at some point have to be tested on but humans. But you're in still the same way. giving people the corona the novel right. coronavirus like you can't yeah. you can't undermine the fact that the that's disease. dangerous right so yeah. that's what i think could easily stop this from happening but it's a really fascinating study and to summarize before we go into your um take a break and go into your study i just want to say again it's like this would happen between people the ages of 20 to 40 mm -hmm. so that's what they who consider would volunteer who would volunteer um there's a potential they'd be protected by this vaccine so there's a potential that you volunteer and you actually end up with the first ever vaccine and it works you would only choose people from a population who are already at high risk of getting coronavirus anyway mm -hmm. which is i think an interesting part of right. the puzzle when we think about how long we're going to be in quarantine and how many people are likely going to get this you know if you're a frontline worker about how much risk you're already put people are already risking their lives by going to work in hospitals grocery stores so it's sort mm -hmm. of like that's it you know what i mean like Let's think about that. There are people yeah. already right now yeah, risking if, their life for society. If I was a frontline worker or an essential worker, I'd be very likely to entertain this. If you're like, I, I might actually get it anyway. So why not A, have the possibility of a vaccine and B, knowing people are watching me to make sure I'm healthy. Like there, there is yeah. a more of an incentive for someone who's like, I probably am being exposed to it. Or just not necessarily more of an expensive ex incentive over zero, but more of an incentive over maybe some random person hearing about these trials. Right. Well, okay. I think we should, we're going to take Wait, a break. I just want to finish. I'm oh, gonna, sorry. Two more. Um, so also without this vaccine, there's a high, a high chance that a lot of the world's proportion of the world might get this virus anyways. Mm -hmm. And then the last thing is that, uh, again, just that they'd be monitored with the best care. And I think they also said that people wouldn't get paid so that there right. wouldn't be a socioeconomic incentive. Right. Like, incentive. Anyways, fascinating bioethicists, scientists, everyone is, I think, going to be talking about this more and more as we move into the coming months. And so I just think it's important that we all think about this, talk about this, because I think it's a really tangible concept when we think about how long we might have to be waiting for a vaccine for this specific virus. Okay, well, after Comment Corner 2, I want to know if you, what do your it. thoughts are, if you would do it, I want to come back with my studies on flu camps and we'll have some more discussion around this. Okay. Comment Corner.
Okay, so I grabbed a comment from our iTunes Apple Podcast page today. I just wanted to say thank you all so much because so many people... Something happened. I don't know if the system glitched and they just updated it all at once, but there's like a thousand more ratings not necessarily i mean it's amazing and i'm like is it because we're putting our podcast on youtube and we've been saying comments and asking i appreciate all of you guys listening and doing it yeah it honestly means a thousand people rated it in the last week yeah so it's also possible that apple only like updates it every now and then or something like that but i mean there are certainly a bunch more comments on here as well so i don't think if you work at apple and you know this is a glitch just don't tell us because we're feeling warm either way thank you so much and everyone's been commenting on youtube and all the places we've been posting it so it feels like we are actually getting to engage in a different way now which is nice which we haven't kind of before it was like behind a hidden wall mm-hmm. now we get to see people interacting. now you can see that i'm picking my teeth right now true true um so know. this is from marissa 17 johnston she says greg and mitch i've been listening for years and just want to say that you inspire me so much to continue my degree in biochemistry and to go forward with my passion for science this podcast is always entertaining and i love having it to look forward to every week thank you oh so sweet yeah i think it's like i'm so cool to hear people who are in school or in ready to go to university or college or graduating or out of that like i'm so jealous i'm like i know biochemistry i know i love biochemistry and i'm like i i know that you have exams and it's stressful (laughs) but i like i am jealous I, i mean maybe they don't have exams right now Okay, Who knows dodge what's happening? I don't know. I wonder. Let us follow it. up. Let us know. Are you having to take exams? Are they able to do home exams? Now, I, I'm sure lots of people are, but maybe people it might, that might be stressful too to not know if you're. I would love. <laughs> I would love if they're like, okay. I have been seeing on TikTok that people are like, they're just like told like, don't look at your book. Better not cheat. And oh yeah, just yeah. Jokes like obviously <laughs> I'm gonna look at my book. Yeah, and just like be on the internet yeah. looking for the answers. <laughs> um, we do need to address. A one-star review we got. Yes. <laughs> the most recent one just says, Joe Exotic Lover. Tiger King episode. I love Joe Exotic. <laughs> one star. <laughs> so we obviously dragged Joe Exotic as a person a little bit. Uh, and it's just like... And we found his lover. But I also kind of love that this person's name is Joe Exotic Lover. And they're either trolling us. Yeah, this has to be a troll. Or they literally are obsessed with Joe Exotic. In which case, you do you, babe. Okay. But thank you again for all you sending such beautiful, nice little comments to us. Today I turned into a squirrel. Oh my God, where am I nuts? <laughs> okay. So what do you want to do first? You want me to talk about flu camps or do you want to talk about whether or not we would take that trip? Ends with whether or not we would. Okay. I think I well, just, like, someone studied how to like get to the, you know what I mean? Save the peak. Someone must have written a screenplay over here. Knows when to put the climax. <laughs> oh, I hope. Okay, guys, guess off. Sound off in the comments what you think my screenplay is about. <laughs> uh, so... I just, my, this isn't actually that different. I can't tell if you're picking your nose or you're picking your teeth. What's Ow, <laughs> I just hit my head. Oh, I fell over. Ow, great lady. <laughs> um, so this won't be that different. It's just a perspective on similar things that have been done with the flu. So it kind of precedent for what is happening now in some ways, but not quite as extreme. So okay. there are these things called flu camps. I think having done research on them, they were very popular in the UK, or at least most of the companies and and research and comments and applications I saw were related to the UK. So basically in this version, though, um, you get paid to get the flu. Which huh. is different than what you were saying is happening now, which is important because that's a socioeconomic uh, Can I issue. say again, this is not happening now. This is a study talking about... Sorry, whether or not it yes, should. Yes. But they were suggesting that people wouldn't be paid in it. Is what yeah, I mean, right? that's what I read in an interview about the person who wrote the article. Yes. Right. So these are also short-term trials. It was actually quite shocking how much money they offer. So this is... The one I found was from 2012. It was in the UK. And people were offered almost four thousand pounds for <gasps> ten to eighteen days. Pounds, that's, which is like that's I like mean, I don't 8, know the conver- Canadian dollars. Yeah, that's like the conversion rate's often quite high, so that is a lot for ten days. So they say often students apply because it's like an amazing way to make quick money. And basically, they huh. are doing the same thing. They're they're giving them either a vaccine or a placebo, or sometimes they're testing antivirals. Uh, and then giving them a dose <gasps> wow. of a respiratory virus, like a seasonal flu, to see how they react and whether or not they are 
given immunity because of the vaccine and they just studied one thing i thought was interesting is like they really sell it they show you like beautiful pictures of people hanging out and they are like you have an ensuite room with the playstation and a tv and internet and it's meant it's meant to kind of be like it's gonna be great wow <laughs> wow this is so interesting okay um so i just thought it was i had never heard of it had you ever heard of these before flu camps while well, actually talking about this concept of the vaccine and human challenge trials with friends. I actually had a friend recently tell me that a lot of it, that's funny. You said UK, a lot of her, um, British UK friends who she taught in Korea with when they went back to the UK after not, again, not having a job being relatively young, they all signed up or oh, a bunch of them signed up to be in a flu camp. That's, that's what oh, she, wow. yeah, she told me about them. And I remember being like, wait, what? And then I thought like, that is an interesting thing. I definitely would have done when I was like a student. Yeah. It's also important that they're young, I assume too, because right. they they're probably an ideal subject to test on. And to but not. what do you mean they make it look fun? Because obviously you have to be isolated. You're not going to be you like, you share a room, out. but you have a roommate. Would they, did they have the placebo? Because you're just going to get it from well, that. I don't know. They don't tell you who gets what. I guess they would give you both either the, the same vaccine one, or probably. both the placebo. Yeah. Or, well, you're getting exposed, so it doesn't really matter. <gasps> okay. There's my screenplay. People falling in love in a flu camp. <laughs> oh, that's so cute. But then getting... Okay, never mind. Don't I'm go. Not, I'm not going to give away uh, my idea. So I, should, this, I don't want um, misinformation. Is, I have heard about things like chicken pox parties which happened when we were young not that i ever went to one i'm not sure if you had because we're old enough that we didn't have the chicken pox vaccine we actually exactly had to so i do you remember getting chicken pox i do i do <laughs> do you remember getting <laughs> I, I do i, 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 I actually, actually i actually think i remember a little actually bit actually clearer than you do i actually <laughs> think i like got more than i actually think i got 172 and i heard you only got 171 <laughs> i don't um, i don't remember i you don't, don't. Remember. i have a memory oh, but then you got shingles didn't you? i did get shingles. so does that mean you didn't get chicken pox no i did get chicken or pox you... but i have a weird memory that i can't tell if it's a real memory or just a story my mom told me and i can't remember if i once asked my mom about chicken pox and then she was like i don't remember if you got chicken pox <laughs> i don't i truly don't know anything about my own life i don't remember what's real what's fake um, okay but i did get shingles either way <laughs> okay I remember one time, like, I had known you when you got them, and it was like, don't go in the pool. I remember we were, like, at my parents' place. I was, like, a, I literally think I was immunosuppressed from university because I was like, all I ate was much. craft dinner and, like, partied and, like, s like stayed up all night studying. Like, I was, like, I think I got shingles. Because your my, body's just, like, given up. Yeah, my, do my doctor was literally, like, you should not have shingles right now. And I was, like, he was, like, are you immunocompressed? And I was, like, haven't slept in days. Uh, <laughs> anyway, so these chicken pox parties, the concept was to have kids who have chicken pox, some who don't all come together just so they all get it. So parents could just get it over with. This is pre-vaccine. Pre -vaccine. And the idea then, and it wasn't just chicken pox. They did this for measles before vaccine existed. This is so dangerous. Yeah. Right? Now it is definitely not recommended okay. for, especially <laughs> also there's a vaccine. the fear, the fear was, so an example of measles for, sorry, using measles as an example, um, it's worse to get it later in life. So they believed, and I think it is true that if you get it under five, it's less severe than if you get it over five. And so that's why parents felt incentivized to get it while they were young and to have these parties Again, before a vaccine, before vaccines. Okay. Nowadays, these kind of parties are often linked to sort of the anti-vax movement because they don't want to use vaccines. Oh my God. Uh, and, and so they are, wholly not recommended by all doctors i shouldn't say all doctors but like the medical community at large recommends vaccines because they're safe and then you get the same effect and you can't guarantee your child wouldn't have a severe reaction to any particular disease oh and so it's God. just much safer for vaccines but yeah i okay, thought that was interesting or vaccine hesitant people are just like they sure know how to pop off and just do the like <laughs> they just go rogue so hard it's like yeah they're like we're anti-vaccine but no what we are gonna do we're gonna get our kids together to, and just get i won't them get too <laughs> graphic but the way it describes sometimes sharing diseases like like they like take snot from certain individuals or they take pus from individuals and put it in their kids at that point as stuff. a parent aren't you kind of like mm, maybe this is wrong <laughs> like the poor kids just like i don't want to eat the pus um uh, but yeah that was the idea is that these <laughs> flu parties you either could get over it sooner or you just didn't and have to deal with it sorry to go back to the flu camp you said flu parties. You meant chicken box parties. Chicken box party. But flu there's also flu parties. It was the same, same oh, similar wow. thing. Like flu parties. Sometimes parents would do that to their kids. They just like intensely. Now it's like, okay, just get your flu shot. Yeah. <laughs> um, but for flu camps, that's to design 
flu shots. Yeah, so the flu camps are organized by institutions. I'm and so okay. Whereas I'm these so, parties are individuals taking it upon themselves in the hopes that it'll provide them with some sort of immunity. They need to make like a. I've never seen Love Island, but they need to make a flu camp reality show. I I went down to the flu camp today. Like you know what I mean? Oh, like, like a Dawkins. literal like a flu camp reality show. Be like, I had I had candy. Got the placebo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, she's get, she's just right. A sick, full reality she? show of them living there. Yeah, just be, and being like, oh, I, I just don't know. I would actually watch that. Yeah, I'd be like, I, I'm I'm feeling re- I'm feeling right and sick definitely today. Definitely British television is the one to do it. Don't they have that TV show where you just watch people watching the news? Yeah, I used I, like they would definitely do a show where it's just like people guessing if they got the placebo. Channel Four, BBC, <laughs> call us up. Okay, we've got no day for yay. I want to round this out by answering the question: Would would you or okay. I? T- be part of this trial if we could, if it existed. This is the coronavirus, SARS-CoV-2 virus, human challenge trial where you would be given a placebo or a real potentially, potentially close to being like they're assuming is going to be good vaccine and you would be monitored and it would be about let's and then say you would six be weeks of your life. Given and then SARS-CoV-2. intentionally given SARS CoV two. And it's six weeks of your life. And we are not right now at high risk of getting it as people who have the privilege to stay home. Right. Okay. We, oh my God. <laughs> I'm not sure I know my answer. I we think, have to get there's there's guns to our freaking heads. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think okay. I th- I need more time, but uh, yeah, my like, general like answer, kind of I'd almost be like, can I be part of a later trial? Like, I wouldn't mind seeing how it goes for okay, the I first five hundred. No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no, I mean, once it seems promising and they're like, no, honey, that's a no. <laughs> okay. Cause they're not saying that's not, it's not, can you do it for a bunch of people? <laughs> and then when you kind of know that it's good, I'm going to say, yeah, they're like, that's when the vaccine's approved. I think I'm too. actually going to say no. Me too. Because I'm not at, I think an important part of it is that you are in a position where you are likely going to get it. And I honestly think that I am so privileged to work on YouTube, to work on this podcast, to work on science communication from the comfort of my home. The truly like, I feel so low risk because I just, I do not leave my home unless I go to our local corner store to shop for glucose sustenance (laughs) of food Water comes out of my tap, and outside of that, I have no yeah, reason to be out in exposure. public. And I don't even need to. Like, say I was a teacher, which was my dream, and I still feel like I am. But, like, you know what I mean? Even then, I would think I would have a different answer because I'd be like, well, I actually, my job is to get out there and teach. If I was a healthcare worker or, or any of those things, I would have a different answer. But because but I can am I... so able to stay home, I would say there's other people who I think would be better for this, and I will not do So it. what if... I'm going to change the scenario just a tiny bit just because I'm curious about what your answer will change to, if, if at all. Is, Wait, can you answer though? Oh, oh, sorry. My answer was also I believe no because, yeah, I think I just am afraid of being unlucky, to be honest. I don't know. I think there is some comfort. Oh, if wait, there, really? That's interesting. Yeah, I think that I have a fear. That you would be the like random genetically and, and, predisposed. Yeah, as, as a young person who maybe just my genes didn't match up properly. And then, so on the yes hand side huh. for myself is this idea that, okay, they are there for you medically. Like if I knew, okay, if you get sick, we have reserved this equipment for you in this trial. So you'll have a respirator. You'll have people looking after you, the best care you can get. Then I would feel different because part of my fear right now is like, you know, the hospitals are getting busier. And what if I don't have private priority for whatever reason to get the help that i would need um huh, okay so that if i knew that that would lean a little more towards yes but you but i'm saying that you we are saying that you do have really good care in this case yeah so then it comes to my modification so i would probably okay. say no because of the we don't have a general exposure to this virus for the most part, because we get to stay home. And I don't think we're essential. Like other people could actually use this if it works. Gotcha. But if that wasn't the case, if they were like, we need as many volunteers as possible because ultimately we are just trying to test this and we're we're not just trying to do it on front like frontline workers. Or people who are at risk. Yeah. For if for whatever reason we lived in a world where they were like, we don't want to test it on them because it's 
to yeah, so you're I saying if they were like we need heroes yeah if it was more of a call for who will volunteer to help the human race and there's no condition because we will accept as many as possible oh so you would do it you would do I'd it. be you more would do likely, it for humanity well i'd still be afraid huh. and i'd still want those assurances that if i got sick if i was being exposed to it and things went wrong i was taken care of as best as possible because there is that part of me that's like oh, i just i don't want to like get so sick and die and like oh my but, god hot take no, <laughs> I, I guess i just like, want to get so that feeling of i don't feel invincible like even i don't a i'm not that young and b even though i'm within the young range for this virus i don't feel like i'm invincible i know some mm. people do so that's all i mean hot hmm. take i'm afraid of dying <laughs> okay but so if it wait. was a call for if it was a genuine Yours, it's so funny because like we mine just goes in are, circles yeah <laughs> also we have like in our relationship it's like mitch has a hard time making decisions. decisions and i'm like i actually think you could probably i could sit here in silence and you could talk for like 20 minutes about like all the, i'm still i'm actually confused what your answer is i'm like i don't know either i'm saying if if no the you you cannot change the parameters it's just the ones we discussed earlier well then from no study. because they wouldn't okay. want us Okay, right? there, that's, that's fair. That's, that's fair. I'm saying it's a more interesting question if they needed us. Okay, okay. If they needed us, I think I would say yes. <laughs> yes, too. Would yes. you risk your life from humanity becomes the question, right? Even if in the these, in these, In this case, yes. But also, right. people are listening to us and there's no lie detector test. So, yes, I would risk my life for humanity <laughs> in any sense. In fact, yeah, mm. I, yeah I am a hero. <laughs> I'm oh, just kidding. Um, wow, it's so funny about us ending being like... This is a really intense question. It I really is. want to know people's truly, answer to it. Yeah. But I think I think before I don't want to change the parameters because it's confusing everything. Let's just talk about the study the way it is. But that's not in your question on the YouTube community tab. You didn't say it, but only they want people who are essential workers don't apply. No, I'm saying, but right? I like the I, question is, it's not as interesting if they're asking for frontline workers, then of course I wouldn't do it. No, I'm saying like we now know that they're going to only likely take from people who are at a high risk. Right. Okay. But I'm I'm So then that's not a choice. Oh, I see. So you're saying we that's are That's why I'm everyone. removing that because it's the not if that's the question then of course my answer is no because I'm not going to Okay, but then it's also the reason that I said no is because I actually don't think that I would be exposed. And so, oh, I see what you're saying. Then then it's like not really a choice you're making. Okay, fine. You're being told like we actually don't want you. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) So that's why I'm saying the question has to be if they needed you. Sorry, if you were fully accepted as a participant, regardless of your exposure or whatever, would you say yes? Okay. Okay. And they won't make you feel guilty if you say no. It's, yeah. They're not asking. They're only still going to take a small amount of people, but they want a good sample from Toronto. You know what I mean? That's yeah. not necessarily doctors, nurses. I think I would say yes to that. Ooh, this is crazy. Okay. Yeah. Right? I think I would say yes to that. That's, and that's the question I want to ask. I think because... Of course, we might have listeners and watchers who are frontline workers, and I would be most interested in their response. But ultimately, at large, lots of people Let's are able to assume they want everyone. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. So let us know. Wow. Sound off in the comments. Let us know. Uh, hashtag side note podcast whether or not you would be willing to, at this stage, take a trial vaccine and be given coronavirus to see if it worked. Wow. That's an intense question. Oh my gosh. Oh gosh. Okay. Yeah. I think it is one of those things that I, w- I could think about forever. I would need more time. I think everyone should probably take some. Time to think so about it if you're fascinated <laughs> if we're gonna option. look back on this and be like it happened. We'll see. Okay. Well, thank you all so much for listening and for watching. Feel free to talk to us online on hashtag side no podcast. Yeah, otherwise, we will see you next time. Peace. Peace.